Ukraine national initiatives to enhance reform. And I'm very pleased to have you all here today because we would like to talk about one of the national initiatives that are pressing for Ukraine um, and pressing for many of your professional and private life. And what we would like to ask you to help us with today is to help us review some of the background materials, information that together uh, with the general's help of ICPS we have prepared um, and bring your human capital to the table to advise us uh, how civil society could play an active, constructive role to advance the question of land reform. EU initiated Finland funded project Crimean Policy Dialogue where the most sources of conflict were identified and one of them is exactly land issues. This is the reason why I I am Igor Shevlekov, International Center for Policy Studies, uh, a part of the team that works on, on this project. Vladimir Lapa, Ukrainian Agribusiness Club. Kirana Niska, International Center for Policy Studies. Nikola Pogachev, expert ICPS. Dmitro Boyarchuk, Center for Social and Economic Research, KC Ukraine. I'm Elena Goyeva, project funded by ICPS. Andrei Koshel, uh, President of the Land Union of Ukraine. Nicholas Rezak, Vice President of Association of Farmers of Ukraine. Uh, Howard Ackman, I'm the COP of a project called Local Investment National Competitiveness, and we do lots of work on land as an implementer for AID. Natalia Burchuk, I'm a Senior Analyst of the ICPS. I'm Ivan Boschek, I'm from the Vila University in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm a researcher and actually working on my PhD related to democracy, promotion, and civil society development in Ukraine. My name is Sergei Kando, I'm a team member in German Ukrainian Agricultural Policy Dialogue, hosted at Institute for Economic Research and Policy. My name is Isabel Karolina, I'm from Ukrainian Agricultural Policy Dialogue, hosted at Institute for Economic Research and Policy. Okay, um, thank you so much. Uh, as far as I can tell, we have representatives of civil society, we have representatives of donor community. Um, we actually extended our invitation to other stakeholders in this dialogue too. So um, even though some of them might not be here, uh, we will make sure that, that uh, those that's been discussed and recommended at the end of this conversation uh, will be distributed to the widest possible audience. Uh, one of the things that sort of immediately will happen after this meeting, uh, we will have a sort of final, final, final version of this memorandum uh, paper um, based on your input and advice. Mm -hmm. um, the floor is yours, Igor, for walking us through the paper, please. Thank you all. Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to tell that uh, this presentation will be uh, the first in a series of presentations uh, uh, of analysis and research that we have uh, done and are still doing uh, upon request of PACT. Uh, and this analysis is uh, mapping the reforms in Ukraine. Uh, in this uh, in this analysis, we try to not only look at the substance of reforms, what the decisions are, what are the um, pros and contrasts of a particular uh, solution, but also at the factors that make uh, a reform successful or make it fail. And those factors uh, are, uh, of course, the positions of the main stakeholders. Um, the existing obstacles, and we also look at the role of civil society, uh, the role that civil society plays in the uh, reform and how it can be uh, enhanced and how uh, donor community can cooperate with civil society in Ukraine or support uh, particular initiatives. 
so today I'm presenting the first uh, analysis of this kind, uh, the uh, land reform. Uh, the structure of our analysis on other topics is absolutely similar to this one. We follow, we, uh, follow the same structure of policy analysis uh, consistently in, uh, in our work and we have uh, had, uh, we have gained a rather extensive experience of analyzing different areas of uh, different policy areas or policy issues and we are uh, convinced that the approach, the methodology uh, has to be consistent in order for analysis to be uh, really useful and have value for, uh, for, for different stakeholders. So about land reform. Of course, the main issue of land reform is lifting the moratorium on sales of agricultural land, farmland in Ukraine. And uh, we think uh, that uh, there is a, a recognition, a wide recognition in Ukrainian society that at some point the uh, moratorium has to be lifted and the uh, market for farmland will be formed. Uh, after many years of political and business speculations, uh, this reform is now quite unpopular in, in uh, the society at large but we believe that Ukraine has a good opportunity to turn, to make this uh, land reform from unpopular to the one that has uh, strong support among voters and public at large uh, but it, to make it happen it is necessary for the government first of all to formulate a clear public vision of the reform and initiate and have a wide public debate on this uh, Land reform is a part of the President's, President's Economic Reform Program for 2010-2014 and the goal of this reform is uh, formulated as uh, to set up a transparent market for farmland on the basis of a consolidated land cadastral system. Uh, we propose uh, modification to this formulation as follows. Uh, the goal should be to establish a modern market for farmland based on a transparent state uh, land title registration system and state guarantees that property rights will be respected. Uh, this reform mm, attempts to uh, do something about this moratorium have encountered a number of uh, key problems and the main is that there is no systemic view of land reform and there is no consensus among the key uh, stakeholders on the main issues related to lifting the moratorium on the sale of farmland and those issues are uh, the degree of freedom of ownership and uh, disposal of the land so what restrictions uh, will be uh, the role of the government or, or the state in regulating the land market what uh, what kind of regulation and what institutions will have uh, to be created as uh, as a result of lack of clear state policy there is no clear information for the society to uh, to know about this reform the society at large cannot understand uh, all the many aspects of the reform and the consequences it is going to bring. As a result, uh, most rural residents uh, are afraid of losing their land or uh, being forced to, to sell it for, uh, for pennies. Uh, and on the part of the government, uh, no attempt has been made to inform owners or the main stakeholders, mainly the owners of uh, land plots, and communicate with them. Extension of moratorium uh, that will prevent formation of a civilized land market has a number of consequences. Uh, one is uh, that Ukraine's agriculture will uh, still have low uh, investment attractiveness with potential losses of about 50 billion uh, greenness a year of investment. Uh, 
land remains undervalued, which brings losses to rural residents at about five, seven hundred rimias per annum on each hectare of land that they lease out. Uh, constitutional rights of the owners of land to dispose of their property is violated. Uh, current problems will not be resolved and further uh, new problems will be accumulated. So this is the cost of non-doing if, if the reform is not implemented. Um, currently, uh, a number of policy decisions is provided for in the President's Economic Reform Program and uh, Action Plans. Um, there are a number of uh, legislative decisions, the laws that have to be adopted in, in the program, and some institution, uh, institutional decisions are also in the pro uh, provided for in the program, but those institutional decisions are uh, incomplete and not specific. Uh, the program has no financial uh, dimensions or no financial decisions Regarding the budget or other uh, financing, financing sources are anticipated in the program. Mm. According to uh, our analysis, m most stakeholders are interested in a transparent land market. And now, uh, these groups have a direct and uh, direct interest without uh, restrictions, really, without reservations. First of all, the investors who want to put their money into the agricultural sector of Ukraine. Banks, the same, with the same interest, but they, will, uh, they are not going to invest, they want to lend uh, money to Ukraine's farm sector to promote mortgage. Uh, another big uh, and powerful group is uh, large agricultural companies or diversified companies who have large land holdings and would like to legalize them. Although most of uh, their land holdings came through the shadow market. And shadow deals. Wider groups are also interested in a transparent land market. There are about 7 million owners of uh, land plots or land parcels in Ukraine especially those who cannot work on uh, their land and would like to sell it, are interested in the uh, land market. Uh, more than 40,000 farms are also interested, especially those who, who have a strong position in the business now and would like to expand their business by expanding their land holdings. Uh, however, these two groups uh, fear potential losses uh, from uh, a land market introduction because there is no clear vision of, it, of reform and therefore they don't support uh, outright uh, cancellation of the moratorium right now. Uh, the unrestricted uh, and unreserved opponents of the uh, open land market are only the left-wing political parties and this is mostly the uh, political opposition. Uh, since U Ukraine's uh, strategic goal is integration with the European Union, we analyzed the uh, framework for this policy that exists in the European Union. Uh, right now and previously, Ukraine has had no obligation to completely reflect uh, EU legislation regarding the uh, land ownership or land market. The main regulation in the EU is the uh, agreement establishing the European Economic Community that provides for a possibility that a citizen of one member state uh, is able to acquire land and build on the territory of another member state. However, application of this general principle is different in uh, each individual member state. Uh, Laws can be different, institutions can be different, and uh, regulations can be different. Uh, what the experience of new member states uh, shows us is that liberalizing the land market and adapting to the EU legislation is uh, both lengthy and costly. And many member states 
have uh, agreed on a transition period to fully comply with the uh, EU legislation on land ownership. The pres President's uh, economic reform program uh, provides for a particular timetable or plan uh, to implement the reform. Uh, it was planned that uh, a land market will be launched from the 1st of January of 2012. Uh, two main uh, bills or laws on the land market on the state land cadaster uh, have to be adopted by mid uh, by the middle of this year. It's already evident that the original schedule is seriously delayed. Uh, however, we predict that uh, the intention to finally uh, implement this reform will be realized and maybe with a little delay, but over 2011, 2012, moratorium will be officially lifted. But in fact, uh, it will mean that restrictions will be relaxed, but they will, many restrictions will still, uh, will still remain. Uh, there are many civil society players, associations uh, that have a particular position towards the um, land reform. And here you can see uh, the, our analysis of their um, positions and uh, the types of activity they uh, mainly practice. Big business and uh, small and small farms are also for, uh, both for and against the reform. Um, small scale farmers and uh, ordinary owners of land parcels are currently mostly against the reform, against lifting the moratorium. Um, other stakeholders like uh, business associations uh, are mostly for the reform. And the main uh, activities are lobbying, activism and uh, consultations and research. And shortly, uh, our recommendations uh, for the donor community to uh, support the following uh, some activities uh, of the civil society organizations. Uh, we recommend that uh, in order to overcome this the fears and overcome um, uh, the resistance to the uh, reform, the main stakeholders have to be informed and have to be engaged into the dialogue. Therefore, we recommend uh, running policy campaigns, which will include research, consultations, advice and advocacy. And lobbying, of course. Uh, but for, on particular topics. First of all, uh, the legislation has to be uh, changed or new laws have to be adopted. Uh, which will allow for punish uh, or uh, have a direct link to punishment for violations, which now is not the case. Then uh, the reform has to include uh, particular components that will protect the rights of small farmers who now rent uh, the land. And uh, the missing element right now is uh, protection of open space to uh, natural objects like rivers, lakes, forests uh, for general public. Now this, this is missing in the reform and it's also a source of uh, opposition or uh, disagreement with the reform. Uh, this is, uh, these are the main uh, ideas or messages that uh, I would like to introduce and We'll be happy to answer your questions or uh, to hear your comments. Thank you, Igor. Thank you. Um, 